Welcome. This video is about arithmetic series or arithmetic series. I'll say arithmetic. I'll try my best. I always say arithmetic and it annoys people. Anyway, um, when we talk about arithmetic series, if you haven't seen anything on arithmetic sequences, this video will make absolutely no sense. But if you haven't, there are videos available, including on my channel, but you don't have to go to my channel, whatever. Anyway, um, let's talk about some vocabulary. When I'm talking about a series, all I'm talking about is the sum, which would be um, add, sum of the terms in a sequence. So if my sequence is 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15, my series, ooh, that was terrible, my series is going to be 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15. The diff that's the difference between sequence and series. Series is you add them all up. Sequence is just the idea that the numbers go in order. Now there's two overarching types of series. There's finite series, which have a first term and a last term. And then you have an infinite series, which uh, continues on forever. Uh, now, when the series type that we're talking about specifically here, one of the underheadings would be uh, arithmetic series. And an arithmetic series is basically just a series based on an arithmetic sequence. And I'm going to continue writing this, and the thing that I circled up in the top corner there is a perfect example of an arithmetic series and an arithmetic sequence. So if you have the series or the sequence and you start adding the numbers together, you move into series territory. Now, from here, we're going to talk about there being a formula for the sum of a finite arithmetic series. So I can use this formula to figure out the total value of all the terms in the series, assuming it's finite. Now, if it's an infinite series uh, for arithmetic, there really isn't a formula that you can use. If it's geometric, there's a chance, but in an arithmetic series that's infinite really doesn't have anything. I'm going to post the most likely version of this series that you'll see in case you're looking at it at a textbook or whatever. You'll probably see S of n, which is, uh, uh, sorry, the, essentially it acts like the sum of, but they're saying it's a series with n terms in it, is equal to uh, n over 2, which would be the number of terms over 2, times a of 1 plus a of 2, or a of n, I'm sorry, a of 2. I was thinking about this too, so this should be ace of n. Now, the idea from my um, series earlier, so I had 3 plus 6 plus 9 plus 12 plus 15. If I wanted to find the value of all of it, I mean, you could add it all up, and it gives you 45. So really, it's... But this is a really small series. What if you have 600 terms in it? You want to sit there and add it up forever. So instead, the idea should be based off of the formula. So let's punch in the formula, and then I'll show you, if you're interested, um, what the form where the formula comes from in case you don't have a little... Um, in case you don't have a formulas page or a book handy, maybe you can remember it. Now, if I just punch it straight into the formula, my this would be s of 5 because there's 5 terms in this series. Uh, my n value would be 5 because there's 5 terms. And then my ace of 1, of course, would be 3 because it's the first term. And my last term, or ace of n, would be 15. So I do 15 plus 3, which is 18. And if you do it uh, times 5, you get 90 divided by 2, you get 45, which proves out exactly what I said before. Now, I'm going to take a minute to talk about what it looks like or why it works the way that it does. So if you don't want to see this, look for another picture to pop up, and I'll be at the next section. So you're going to slide through on YouTube is what I'm saying. Now, the idea is that it comes from um, averaging the first and last terms. So really, it, in my head, it should be rewritten this way. S of n equals a of 1 plus a of n divided by 2 times n. Or maybe you put the n in the front. It doesn't really matter. Uh, what this says is that I'm averaging the first and last terms and then t multiplying it by the number of terms. So to average, you add the, two n the numbers and then you divide by the number of them. Well, if I only have a first and last term, that'd be divided by 2. Uh, I'll show you here. So you've got 3 plus 15 divided by 2. Uh, 3 plus 15 is, of course, 18. So you add 2 or divide by 2 and you get 9. Well, 9 is exactly the middle term. And if I re, uh, 
sort of reorganize how I'm thinking about 12, I can say that 12 is the same as 9 plus 3. And then I can say that 15 is 9 plus 6. 6 is 9 minus 3, and 3 is 9 minus 6. So really, all I'm doing is when I'm adding them together, is I'm adjusting for the fact that the plus 6 will cancel the minus 6, the plus 3 will cancel the minus 3, and instead of looking at it in terms of this gigantic thing, I'm looking at taking the average term, or the average value of the term, and just applying it to each one of the terms that are there. So that's where the n over 2 times a sub 1 plus a sub n things comes from. They're just averaging the first and last terms and applying that value uh, to each one of the spots that are available. So that's kind of how that formula works. It's not really, you know, super complicated. As an example of one, say I have a 40th term sequence. I'm trying to figure out how much I can get rid of. Mm, I'll just rewrite the formula. Um, so here's the formula again. So if I have a, let's just do evens through 100. So my first term, so it'd be 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8. It's a really simple and common series, plus 100. So in that, I would say 100 divided by 2 means there's 50 terms in each series, because my common difference, of course, is just uh, 2. So I'm going to rewrite it as S of 50, because there's 50 terms. Put my n here to say there's 50. My first term would be 2, plus my last term, which is 100. And if I do 100 plus 2, shockingly enough, it's 102. And then I'd multiply that by 50. And then I divide that by 2, and it gives me a final value of the sum of that 50 series is 2,550. So that's me using the formula. But the formula itself is just averaging the first and last terms and applying it to all of them. Now let's look at the uh, series idea in terms of a little, let's add a little context to it. So in this one, Lisa, who uh, once you hear more, will you'll find out really probably angered her family. Um, she buys eight digital songs in the first week of January. She increases the number of songs that she buys each week by two. So not only uh, is she uh, buying two more songs, she's actually buying eight plus two, so and then 10 plus two. So that sequence goes eight, 10, uh, 12, 14, that whole thing. Now, what we want to know is she, do, oh, she does that for the rest of the year, I'm sorry. How many songs will she purchase by the end of the year? And if once we get to the end, you can get the feeling that she's probably going to be in tons of trouble unless she's kind of rich if she paid 99 cents a song. So what we need to do here under these conditions is I need to look at the information that's given and I'm going to eventually find the sum of the series. So I'm going to write the sum formula down so it's s of n is equal to n over 2 and of course we're going to add the first term and the last term. Now I need to know how many terms are in the sequence so she does it all year and there's 52 weeks so we're going to say 52 weeks a year or uh, 52 terms in our s series because there's 52 weeks. Uh, my first term of my a sub 1 here is of course uh, 8 because she starts out buying 8 in the first week and it also may or may not help me to uh, know that the common difference is 2. And it actually does help me. I don't know why I add the would and might not. The last thing that we need for our formula or to make it work is I need to have some statement about what the uh, 52nd term is. So in order to do that, I'm going to go back to the idea of the explicit formula for an arithmetic series. If you haven't seen the arithmetic sequence, I'm sorry, if you haven't seen the arithmetic sequence video, it, this is where that comes from and it, you might want to go do that. So this is the formula. I'm looking at the first term, and for each term after that, I'm going to add the common difference. And in order to adjust for the fact that you don't add it to the first term, I need to say that I'm going to do it the number of times of my term minus 1, which is to say I have this going on. If I, uh, I want to get to 5 from 1, I need to go to the common difference two times, but this is the third term, so I do it two times because 3 minus 1 is 2. That's where the 3 minus 1 part comes in. And I just multiply it by the common difference. Now, I'm trying to find the a sub 52nd term because I want to know the last one. I know she's starting at 8. I know that it'd be 52 minus 1 here, and I know that my common difference is 
2. I don't know where I needed to write the D again there, but I guess I felt in my heart that I did. Um, so 52 minus 1 is, of course, 51. And then I'm going to multiply that by my common dif difference of 2, and I'm going to end up with 102. So my 52nd term's total value is 110. So I'm going to take that information, and I'm going to write it over here. Now I have everything that I need to get to the final sum of this series. I'm going to race this out just a little bit, and then I'm going to work it. So I'm looking for the S sub 52, uh, and I'm going to use the N value here, which is 52 terms. I am going to divide by 2, and then I'm going to add the first term, which is 8, and the last term, which is 110. So if I add 110 and 8, of course that's 118. Uh, then I could average that amount, by the way, so I would add 110 plus 8 and divide by 2 and get 59 if I wanted, and then I need to multiply that by 52 terms, and I get a final value of 3,068. If you'd rather look at it the other way and you want to do it uh, 52 over 2 and then multiply that times 118, you're certainly welcome to do it. You'll still get 3,068. So if you think about it, if uh, Lisa is paying a dollar a song here, that's a lot of money. So anyway, um, let's talk about notation and using uh, summation notation in a series, how we generally represent series in terms of uh, when we work with them. So the big thing in terms of summation notation is that we're going to use a sigma. Usually you'll see, uh, sigma is a Greek letter by the way, you'll, um, ha you'll see it, it'll pop up and it'll be talking about a sum of something. Well, a sequence that acts as a uh, a, s a series is a sum, so there you go. The other major part of it is that it'll have limits in it. Uh, the limits here when we're talking about a series would be the n value or the n values for the beginning and the end of the series. So if you have a 32-term uh, se uh, series there, you'll put that one would be the end, one would be the first one, and 32 would be the last one. Sometimes it doesn't always work out like that. Series don't necessarily have to start uh, in the sequence. Like a sequence could start with the first one, but it doesn't necessarily mean that a uh, series will. We're just limiting in with the summation notation. So if I had, say, everything raised to the fourth, so I'm going to do one to the fourth. 2 to the 4th, 3 to the 4th, 4 to the 4th, 5 to the 4th, 6, 7 to the 4th, so on and so forth. I didn't really mean for that to happen, but it did. Anyway, um, if I was going to only talk about the section that starts here, and then I wanted to limit it out to where it stops here, I'm going to set those limits appropriately, which requires me to look at the term numbers which in this case would just be the base for the uh, power. So uh, I would say on the bottom of my sigma that my n starts at 2, so n equals 2, and then on top I would just write the number that indicates what the uh, term number for the last part would be, so in this case it would be 6. I also need to make a statement about what the series, uh, the explicit formula of the series, which of course in this case would just be n to the fourth power. So if I got rid of all this other nonsense that I had underneath that I don't need, and I also need to indicate that it's a series, which I forgot to do before, I just had it set up as a sequence. This, since I'm raising it to the fourth, I'm starting with the second term, which happened to be here, and I'm going to the sixth term using this explicit formula is the same as this. So that's um, summation notation as far as that goes. So from here, a reasonable next step would be, can we take a series and turn it into summation notation? So I'm going to take the series that I'm given here and see if I can make it into something actually, you know, sort of useful. Probably not, but maybe. Um, anyway, I end up with the series that gets 3 plus 8 plus 13 plus 18 all the way up to 83. So there's a couple components that I need in order to make my summation notation. I need the first term or the, where the term start, or series starts, and I'm going to assume, because I don't have other information, that the number 3 is the first term in the series, so my bottom limit is going to be 1. 
I also need the explicit formula and then I need the uh, maximum value or the term number for 83. 83 is the value of the term but I need to know where it falls in that series in order to set the upper limit. To, in order to get there I need to figure out what the explicit formula is and there's a couple ways that I could get it. Um, I could use the formula for uh, explicit formula of an arithmetic sequence or an arithmetic sequence which is a sub n is equal to a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times the common denominator. My common denominator, I knew this was an arithmetic sequence because I made it, so um, you probably need to determine whether it's an arithmetic sequence first in most situations. So 18 minus 3 gives you 5, so you're going up by 5 every time, that whole thing. So my common difference is 5. n minus 1 is the part I'm looking for, so that's not uh, super unhelpful. I need to do a sub 1 here, which is just 3. Now I can, this is supposed to be minus, I'm going to distribute back. So negative 5 and 5n. Bring down my 3 here. I end up with 3 minus 5 is negative 2. 5n minus 2. That's one way you can find it. You could also just say, oh, well, it's an arithmetic series uh, based off an arithmetic sequence and I'm going to have a common difference of 5 and then you can sort of just rock back the sequence there and 3 minus 5 since I've been adding 5 I'm going to do the opposite which is minus uh, is negative 2 so either way but this is the explicit formula for this which we'll need in a minute the last thing I need to do is figure out what term number matches the value of 83 in order to do that I'm just going to take my explicit formula and say a sub n is equal to 5n minus 2 Actually, I'm going to change color here real quickly just so I don't uh, make it super confusing by mixing things together in such a way. So apparently I changed the color of my eraser. There we go. a sub n is equal to 5n minus 2. If I plug in the value of the last term, I can find out its n value just by solving for n. So I'm going to draw a line, add 2 here, end up with 85, bring down 5n, divide by 5, and I find out that the last term in the sequence is actually the 17th term in sequence, which is important because I'm right about to do my uh, notation, so I'm going to draw what may be the worst sigma that you have ever seen, or maybe not. Maybe you've seen really bad sigmas in your life. I don't know. So this whole thing, that's not as terrible as they usually are. Anyway, uh, on the bottom I need to put n equals and set my bottom limit, which I already determined to be 1, so n is equal to 1. And on top, I need to put my top limit, the number of the term, which is 17. And I, after it, I need to put my explicit formula, which is 5n minus 2. So what this piece of notation says is that using the explicit formula 5n minus 2, I want to plug in, the, I want to start at term 1, go all the way to term 17, and then I want to know what the sum of that whole value is. So that's kind of somewhat useful information. Now that we've seen how to make the notation, let's see if we can go the other direction. Like if you're given the notation, can you come up with the actual sums value? Which is sort of important. So um, I'm working with the first one. It says the explicit formula is 3n plus 1. The nice thing about this is it has an n there as opposed to n squared or something else, which means it's linear uh, or it's an arithmetic series. It means it's going up by a common difference. So I can use the formula for the sum of an uh, arithmetic series. So I'm going to do this and remember I'm going to average the first and last terms. That was supposed to be an n. I just kind of, my pen's starting to spike. Um, times the number of terms. The problem is uh, I'm going to need a couple things before I can get to it which include the uh, a sub 1 value. I'll also need the a sub 40 value because this one goes up to 40. A sub 1 is pretty simple. You just plug it in 3 times 1 plus 1, so it's 4. And on the other side, I would do 3 times 40 plus 1, which would give me 121. Now that I have all the parts that I need, I can go ahead and um, work out the sum formula. So in this case, it'd be a sum of 40, uh, sum of a series of 40 uh, that has a first term of 4 and a last term of 121. 
So I'm going to average those two things together and multiply it by 40 total terms. Now, when you do 121 plus 4, you get 125, divide by 2, that whole thing, multiply by 40. You'll end up with a final value of 25 hundred being the sum of all those numbers. See, it was nice not to have to like work them all out. That would have been really annoying. Uh, so instead, you just have to do that. Now the next one, not quite as nice. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not nearly as nice as the last one because it's n squared. This is not an arithmetic series because the n isn't staying the same, which means the change is not constant. So instead, we're working with, or it doesn't have a common difference anyway. So instead, we're working with the idea of having to write it out. Fortunately, we're only going from term 2 to term 6. So in this situation, I'm just going to do each term. And where I have my n here, I'm going to plug in each individual n value. And hopefully this thing doesn't spike so much that you can't see it. And yeah, it was minus 2. I don't know why I decided to make it minus 2. Um, so from here, what I'm dealing with is adding all those together, and once you do, you'll find out that it has a total value of 80. So in some situations, you have to write them out. Now, the last one, also not linear, because you're raising things to the n power. This is gigantic in terms of what it's going to be. So if you had to do it by hand, it would take maybe the rest of your life. I don't know. It would take a long time. Uh, in fact, just to get some reference, we're going to use a calculator to find out what 4 to the nth power, uh, 4 to the 64th power is. Huge, right? You don't want to do this by hand. So fortunately, I had the calculator to find that out, so I can use it to figure out this sequence as well. And the only one I'm showing is the TI-84+. Plus. If you have something else, there's probably a video or read the manual about how to do that on your calculator. And some of them won't do it, but graphers mostly will. Now, I'm going to go to the math section. And if I, I can click down and go down to 0 here, or I can just hit 0, which works like a 10, uh, and it pops up the sequence notation, or the series notation, I'm sorry. Now, this would be my variable, and since it's already got the alpha pressed, I'm going to hit this and have n there. That way it matches perfectly. The next number is 2, because that's my lower limit. My upper limit is 64. And I just punch in my explicit formula, which would be 4, raised to the n power. Now in order to do that, I need to go to the alpha menu and hit it once because it wasn't already flashing an A, and then pick n, so my variables match here, click out, and then I'm going to hit enter. And it automatically gives me the series value. So they say 4.5 times 10 to the 38. So if I was using, if I click here, that should go away. Yeah, 4.5 times 10 to the 38th power pretty good not to have to hand uh, write those. But anyway, that's uh, arithmetic series from the vocabulary to how you use a calculator to get the long ones and some other stuff in between. So I hope this is helpful to you and uh, good luck with your studies.